A whole new year means a whole host of new features to explore. That's right, the Spring 25 release is here. You might have seen our video on the hottest admin features from the release, and now it's time to shine a spotlight on developers. A big thank you to Peter Chittam for writing the post that inspired this video. Let's get into it. Hot reloading, sometimes called hot module replacement, refers to seeing an update to your typically front end source code reflected in your app immediately without a refresh, the moment your source is updated to your file system. It is a well-established feature of web development. Of course, it's easy to do when you have access to the runtime file systems as you normally would when building a web application in any other front end framework. But Lightning Web Components, specifically Lightning Web Components running on and hosted by the Salesforce platform is different. Your source on the local file system is completely decoupled from the runtime, which runs on Salesforce's servers until now. Lightning Dev Server allows you to serve the JS code from your local source files and have them injected into the DOM of Salesforce using a WebSocket connection. As files are updated in your project, the new code will be automatically injected into the DOM, giving you instant access to changes. For now, you'll need to manually install the Lightning Dev Server plugin and check the source API version in sfdxproject.json to make sure you're running on API version 62 or later. There is a quick configuration to set up the Lightning Dev Server to run on the org you wish to use. This can also be configured in a scratch org definition file. Running the local development server is done through the Salesforce CLI. You have to identify the environment to run in, desktop or mobile, and the app you want to launch. Once invoked, it will open a new browser tab just if you'd run sforg open. There are also limitations on which Lightning Web Component changes can be hot reloaded. For instance, changes to anything that is API decorated will not be hot reloaded. As of the recording of this video, Peter hasn't been able to successfully debug his code in the browser dev tools when running Lightning Dev Server, but that could just be him. We expect this will be more useful in the fine tuning stages of Lightning Web Development, especially around look and feel. And importantly, this feature is available only in beta for experienced cloud sites. Sticking with front end matters for a moment, Salesforce has announced its next UI theme, Cosmos. Along with this, there is the next iteration of the Salesforce Lightning Design System or SLDS, and accompanying tools such as SLDS2, Cosmos is currently in beta with availability limited to some org editions and types. As developers, there's an important point in the release notes with SLDS2 being applied to base Lightning Web Components, internal components, DOM structures will change. This shouldn't be a problem for most orgs. However, if you've accessed protected component structures with your Lightning Web Component code, it could break once SLDS2 goes live. File compression has always been a challenge for Salesforce developers. While there are a few workarounds, as well as external apps and services available to fill the gap, a native solution has remained elusive. In Spring 25, Apex developers finally get a generally available on-platform native API to compress and extract files. This set of Apex classes lives in the compression namespace and looks straightforward to use, including a set of APIs to compress, extract, and control the level of compression. Here's an excerpt from the example in the release notes, showing you how you would retrieve a document from Salesforce and compress it using the compression zip writer class. As with any feature like this, I always wonder what underlying library they've decided to use in case there are challenges in using the API. Only time will tell. It used to be that formulas ran where they ran. Formula fields, validation rules, flows, and the now depreciated workflow rules were all made very powerful with formulas. As of Spring 25, you can now evaluate a formula in Apex code. This brings some cool potential performance gains and opens up the possibility of custom formula editors, such as for app exchange providers. However, opinions on this are divided. It doesn't seem that there is a way to get some of the more important features of custom formulas, such as protected API names of fields used in functions. If you have a use case for evaluating dynamic formulas in Apex, we'd love to hear what you're thinking of implementing. 
Recently, Salesforce has been investing in better tooling to support developers. One such feature is Apex Guru, which is being made generally available in this release. This tool provides code analysis that uses machine learning to identify potentially problematic code. Apex Guru goes beyond rule-based code analysis by being aware of the runtime context of how code is executed. So if a statement is known to be producing high heap usage, long execution times, or other risky runtime performance problems, Apex Guru would factor that into what it flags. This should mean that it would find problematic code that might not be discovered by a deterministic set of rules. Potential problems are flagged as different levels of security, and in each instance, the specific line of problem code is noted, along with a suggested alternative for better performance characteristics. Before we continue with the array of cool things coming this year, let's quickly talk about 2025's hottest topic, AI. Are you ready to kickstart your AI initiative? Did you know there's no point in starting unless your data is clean? Bad data can derail your AI project before it even begins, turning your investment into a costly mistake. Traction Complete is your solution to clean, connect, and optimize your Salesforce data, ensuring it's ready for AI and delivering real business value. Don't let messy data hold you back. Click the link or scan the QR code to see how you can get started on cleaning your Salesforce org today. For our last point, we're saying goodbye to these three features. API versions 21 through 30. As of Spring 25, the Salesforce API will be on version 63. The beauty of versioned APIs is that existing integrations can remain stable at a given version until thoroughly tested and updated to the new version. At least, ideally, that's what happens. However, we all know that sometimes an integration that's working isn't maintained and is left to float along on its original API version. API version 21 marks the Spring 11 release over 13 years ago. That dates back to just about the time Salesforce acquired Heroku. I'd say it's time we thank them and bid them farewell. The retirement of API version 21 through 30 was postponed from its original 2023 date and is now scheduled for the summer 25 release in four months time. So if the work isn't on your backlog yet, it's time to start looking into it. Remember na1.salesforce.com? You'll be forgiven if you don't, but when I first signed into salesforce.com, that was the instance I logged into. These days, orgs have their own boutique my domain names, which are more secure and resilient. These names look like myorgname.my.salesforce.com. My domain has been required for several years now. And because of this, Salesforce is decommissioning instance-based URLs in mid-2025. If you have old integration code knocking about that has hard-coded references to one of these old-style instance-based domain names, it's time to fix it. Pay attention to old integrations and references to static resources on public sites. And remember, if you have any hard-coded references in Apex code, the best practice is to use url.getorg domain URL. Five years ago, we were all excited by the possibility of elastic computing, easily called from Salesforce. Alas, but for the customers who got functions into production, they are soon to be no more. And even if you have some in production, the clock is ticking. Salesforce stopped selling functions in 2023, and there are no more renewals as of last January. If you have an essential feature still running on Salesforce functions, it's time to look for alternatives, such as directly on Heroku, AWS Lambda, or other serverless services from other cloud providers. Moving in implementations from Salesforce functions to another host is, of course, not trivial. However, the Heroku team has tried to provide ample documentation on integrating a Heroku app with Salesforce. There is also a dedicated repo with code examples in Java and TypeScript for migrating Salesforce functions to Heroku apps. Ironically, the original internal name for Salesforce functions was, wait for it, Evergreen. And that's a wrap on our top six hottest Spring 25 features for developers. Quite a mixed bunch, right? Which one is your favorite? Are there any features we've missed? Let us know in the comments below.